Wouldn't it be great if you could just sit down and start editing in DaVinci Resolve without worrying about project settings, setting up timelines, importing common media, or even worrying about your render settings? Well, that's exactly what I've done, and it's easy. And you can do it too. Spend just a couple of minutes setting up a handful of presets and save yourself loads of time in the long run. And talking of speeding up your workflow, big thanks to this video sponsor, NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers. When using an NVIDIA GPU combined with our exclusive NVIDIA Studio driver, can expect general performance boosts in DaVinci Resolve thanks to the CUDA cores, accelerated AI-based effects thanks to their tensor cores, and massively reduced rendering times thanks to the built-in NVIDIA encoder. Scan one of the UK's biggest and most trusted PC component and hardware stores, boasting over 29,000 customer reviews with an average score of 4.8 on Trustpilot. And they have a strong legacy in creator hardware, selling everything from NVIDIA GPUs to pro video and graphics solutions and even their own line of award-winning NVIDIA Studio certified 3XS systems designed for creators. To find out more about Scan's own 3XS systems or to see their lineup of NVIDIA Studio certified laptops, Click on the link down in the description below. And here's mine. This is my very own Scan 3XS workstation. And it's rocking the NVIDIA RTX 3090. Stick around towards the end of this video where I'll show you how I utilize that massive GPU to export my videos super quick. So for my first tip, saving project settings. Here I am in a brand new project. I'm going to click on the cog bottom right hand corner to open up our project settings screen. I've got my resolution, my frame rates, and all that good stuff in here. What you want to do, change the resolution and the frame rate to whatever you need it to be, or whatever you want to save as a preset. So I'm going to save mine as Ultra HD 60. Then I'm going to go to the Presets tab from the menu on the left, and all you want to do is hit Save. If you've changed the frame rate, it may inform you that you're changing it, so just simply hit Change, and that's going to change this current project to whatever you've set it to. So 3840 by 2160 for me. Then we're just going to hit Save As. That's going to ask you to give it a name. I'm going to call this Ultra HD 60 and then click on OK. And that will create a preset. So now whenever you open up a project, you click on the cog, you go to Presets, you can click Ultra HD and it will pull through these settings. Now if you need to make more than one of these presets, all you need to do from this menu, make sure that you click on Current Project. Then go back to your master settings. Let's make a standard HD 60 as well. Then we'll go back to presets, hit save, hit save as. We'll call this one HD 60. Click on OK. And now we've got an Ultra HD 60 and a HD 60. Now the next logical step is to save one of these presets as your default. So it automatically loads whenever you open up DaVinci Resolve. If you're on DaVinci Resolve 18, it's incredibly easy. Set all of your settings to whatever you need them to be, and then simply click on this three little dots, top right hand corner, and then you want to set current settings as the default preset, and that's it. If you're on DaVinci Resolve 17, you won't see this icon in the top right hand corner. Instead, what you need to do, create the preset, so I've got my presets within here, give the one you want a click, and then give it a right click, save as user default config, and that will save that preset as the default, so it will automatically load whenever you open up DaVinci Resolve. For my next tip, we've got timeline templates. Now this has been one of the biggest time savers I think I've ever implemented into my workflow. It saves me a huge amount of time every single time I go to make a project, especially for YouTube. It also helps me to remain far more consistent than I ever was before. So what are timeline templates? Well, let me show you first of all what they do, and then I'll show you how to create them. So here's a brand new, completely blank project in DaVinci Resolve. What I'm going to do is open up this folder, and I've got a few of these DaVinci Resolve timelines. I've got the one called Tutorial, which I use for all my YouTube videos. I'm just going to drag this into my media pool and release. We'll close this. And now I've got this tutorial timeline within the project. And if we have a look, there's already an adjustment clip on the timeline. We could have added any titles, intros, clips, anything at all onto there. I've got a few tracks, B-roll, adjustment, A-roll. And if we take a look at my audio tracks, my voiceover in the inspector effects already has my vocal channel applied, my noise butler, my noise reduction, and my music track is already down to minus 10, so everything's already pre-mixed, which means I can just drag into media and start working right away. So how'd you set them up? Let me show you. Now your best bet is to start off with a completely blank project like I have here. Then we just need to create the timeline that we need. So in my media pool, I'm gonna right click, 
go to timelines and create a new timeline, or I could use the control and N shortcut. This window will appear. I'm gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this one YouTube. Set my number of tracks, I'll go with two for each again. And then I'm gonna untick this use project settings, and then I'm gonna to go to the format tab. From here, you just need to set the timeline resolution and the frame rate as you need to. You can, of course, set the monitor and the output settings as well if you require. Once done, simply hit create and that'll create this YouTube timeline. So I've got my timeline down here, I've got my four tracks. If I want to name them, I can simply click the word video two and then call this one B-roll, I can call this one A-roll, for example, and we can just go through and set them up. If you want to apply any text for a title, for example, at the beginning of your videos, you can just drop a text on there. You can put generators on here. You could even put adjustment clips. I'm gonna to go to my audio. I'll give my audio one a click. In the inspector, I've got the audio and the track volume. I could lower this if I wanted to. And again, I could scroll down to my audio effects. I could grab something like my vocal channel and drop that on the actual audio one track. So you want to drop it over here, not on the timeline itself, but on this audio one. That will apply the vocal channel to that entire track. So it's all ready to go to accept media when you want it. Once your timeline is all set up and all ready to go, all you need to do from the media pool, find your YouTube timeline or whatever you called it, right click, go to timelines, export, the top option says DRT, give that a click, and then you just choose the location for this DaVinci Resolve timeline template. So I'm gonna save this in the same folder, hit save, and then it's good to go. If I was to just to delete this YouTube timeline from this project, we'll open my folder back up. I've got youtube.drt, we'll drag this in. We've got our timeline with our title and our generator all ready to go. You can double click to open up this timeline template, hit save to save the project, and that template will remain unchanged. You can just open it every single project, it will load in all your settings, and you're good to go. It's amazing, I use it all the time, you definitely should be too. And for my next tip, we're gonna be talking about sharing media between projects. And you do that using something called a power bin. So we're back in DaVinci Resolve. Now the first thing you need to do, click on view at the very top, come on down to where it says show power bins, and then give that a click if it doesn't have the tick already next to it. Then open up your media ball, and you should see this power bins location here. Now anything you import into this bin will be available from any other project. Now it's important to note you're not actually putting your media, you're not putting any music into DaVinci Resolve, you're just telling it where to find the files. So you need to make sure the files are stored on your PC in an area where they're not likely to be moved or deleted. You don't want to import things from your downloads folder into your power bin for example because you'll probably clear that downloads folder at some point and that will break the media within the power bin. So something I use a lot in my videos, sound effects. So I'm gonna to come to this master bin here. I've got this empty space here. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna to go to new bin. I'm gonna call this sound effects. And then we're gonna open it up. Then I'm just gonna find my sound effects folder. I've got one here, sound effects, and I've got these sound effects here. What I'm gonna do, highlight them all, click, drag, and drop them into this bin here. So now I can go to sound effects. I've got these sound effects ready to go. At any point, I drop them on the timeline hit play and it's there whenever I need it. Now we'll give another example of this, music, memes, PNGs, logos, whatever you want, you can save them within here. You can even do the same thing again for fusion titles or adjustment clips. So I'm gonna come on down and grab this clean and simple. Let's say that I change this to be Mr. Alex Tech and I wanna save this for future projects once again. First thing you want to do, in the inspector, go to file and then you've got this name. So I'm gonna call this Clean and Alex. Then once you've done that, you'll see the name change on the timeline. I can just click, drag to put that in my power bin. And now any project I open, I can just drag it onto my timeline. It's got the changes that I've made, it's on there and it's ready to go. And now for my next one, saving your export settings as a preset so you don't need to create it every single time. So I've finished editing my project, it's ready to deliver. So I'm gonna jump into the deliver page. Now, first things first, in the render settings here, select the option from the very top that you wish to use. I'm just gonna go right to the left to select the custom export. I'm gonna give it a name. This one's just gonna be called YouTube. Don't worry too much about the location. You have to put that in every time anyway. Then what we need to do is just set the settings as we usually would. So I always do my videos in MP4. 
The codec I use is H.265, and then I make sure to use the NVIDIA encoder. Using the NVIDIA encoder within DaVinci Resolve Studio, or switching to MP4 H.265 on the free version of DaVinci Resolve, Resolve can utilize the NVIDIA encoder built into your NVIDIA graphics card. In this short example, I managed to knock a whole three minutes off my rendering time simply by switching to the H.265 NVIDIA encoder. Then we're gonna set the resolution to whatever you want it to be, in my case, it's Ultra HD and the frame rate to 60. That's all I generally change for my video settings, but you can, of course, amend these as you need to. Then what you need to do, above all of this, you've got these three little dots right here. Give that a click, and then you've got an option to save as a new preset. Give that a click. Then you give it a name. So this is Ultra HD 60 265 for me. That will do. And then I just click on OK. Now, whenever I want to render with those settings from my little menu at the very top, Scroll right to the left, I've now got a UHD 60 265. I give that a click, it pulls in all my settings. I can just add this to the render queue and render it as we need to. You can make as many of these as you wish simply by repeating the same process, creating a new preset and job done. Don't forget to check out Scan's lineup of NVIDIA Studio approved systems by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time. See ya.